it premieres tonight on Discovery. Uh, on Discovery um, at 10 Eastern time. Um, we've had this gentleman on before way back in the day. I met him when he was on NFL Network picking games. This was a long time ago when he was on the great show, ago. According to Jim. Um, and he's ready for his next stage in life, which is building a cannabis business from scratch in Southern Oregon. Growing Belushi's star, Jim Belushi, here on the show. How you been, Jim? Oh, man, nice to be back with you. How are you? I'm man? doing better for talking to you. Are you calling from Southern Oregon right now? Is that where you are? No, in, no, actually, I'm in Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> isolated on a little island. <laughs> Amazing. Do you have? Are, are, do you have? Uh, my, the, I, the island is social distanced from the country. Yes, it is. I would agree. So, <laughs> wow. So you are far from Southern Oregon right now. Do you have your own cannabis business working there in Martha's Vineyard as well, Jim? No, 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 not at all. Okay. This, this, is, uh, this is the time I can take a little bit of a break. Because our harvest uh, begins uh, September 10th, so I'll be going back in a week getting ready to to cut it down, to trim it, to cure it, to trim it, and sell it. And uh, I, I, I'm just like a boots on the ground, ground guy. I am a rich. I am a farmer. <laughs> I am not. It was so much easier acting, doing other yes. people's lines, opposed to growing other people's strains. Let me tell you. <laughs> I am a farmer. I am Bill Murray and Elmer Fudd wrapped in one, chasing gophers, squirrels, aphids, russet mites, uh, grass. I see a grasshopper and I freak out. I mean, we're, man. We're it, looking at a photograph of you, what looks like a hedge, like it's about 10 feet tall. Are you saying that that's cannabis, what we're looking at, that you're you're walking through right now? That's is Yes, yes. Yes, beautiful, beautiful female plants um, because they're the ones that have the THC and the terpene values. So yes. wh- uh, I guess the first question is why? Jim, why did you decide to do this and then make a TV show out of it? Well, I, well I, you know, listen, first of all, you bring everything you've ever learned up to every job you do, right? I mean, so uh, I, I got this farm. And I, I had a, a little property on the river, and then the farm came up behind me. It was 80 acres, and I bought the farm, and I didn't know what to grow. And that year it was legal, 2015, in Oregon. I said, well, I guess it's the new agriculture. This is like the new trend, so let's do it. And boy, did I enter into a world I knew nothing about. And so I filmed it. So as my education goes, so does the audience. So. We've learned a lot about the business. There's, it's not a stoner show. Right. It's a show about farming, about the, the quality. About, I mean, I know everything. I know that the ground has got to be 64 degrees temperature in order for the micronutrients to go into the roots and more to the THC to rise up to the water leaves. I know, you know, 45% of pro-light. And I, I, I know it all. No. Damn. So, who, how, is is there a manual for this, Jim? Is there like a how do you how, how well, how'd you yeah, learn I mean, it? There's a manual as far as agriculture is concerned. There's a lot sure. of similarities as far as fertilization and and you know natural pesticides. But no, all the you know uh, criminals, <laughs> you know, that were criminals three years at Groupon, are now legit, and they're filling these farms and teaching us. Uh-huh. Jim Belushi, Growing Belushi, premiering tonight at 10 Eastern time on Discovery, uh, joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So um, appearances it's include... Funny. It's Yeah, I was about it's, to say funny. I mean, because you've got some funny people, including yourself, involved here. Dan Aykroyd is going to make an appearance uh, on this? Danny is in it. Judy is in it. My sister-in-law, John's widow. Uh, there's a whole Blues Brothers section in there. We perform on that little stage on my property have a big harvest party we go to columbia my cousin chris and i i went down to columbia to speak and i went well you know let's grab some cameras i was there for nine days improvising (laughs) two of the episodes well really one of the episodes is all columbia stuff that happened man i mean there was 150,000 people of smoke out we were in the middle of there was a gunshot there was a little bit of a stampede i mean we got all this on camera all real time it's quite exotic it's it's educational and it's 
funny. And it's called growing Belushi, not growing pot, because I kind of grow along with it as a person of my own personal kind of traumas that I've experienced in my life. Right. And I, I pitched it to uh, this great guy, Michael Rapino, who runs Live Nation. Sure. I pitched the idea to him. And what a visionary this guy's been, man. He's one of the smartest people in the business. Anyway, I pitched it to him, and in eight minutes, he stood up, shook my hand. He says, how much money do you need? We'll finance it. Hey. So it was great. And then Discovery picked it up. We shot it. Discovery picked it up, and we're on tonight. Off you go. 10 Eastern tonight. When was the first time you met Dan Aykroyd, Jim? Remember? Uh, I, I remember. I do remember. I was visiting my brother John in New York. I had hitchhiked from college. I was in his apartment. And Danny Aykroyd came in. They they had not done Saturday Night Live yet. They'd just been cast. Gilda Radner came in, and she was the most stunning, beautiful person I'd ever seen. I couldn't stop staring at her. At one point, she turned to me and went, who is this guy? I was like, oh, my God, I'm really staring too hard. And Danny Aykroyd and John were joking about, this show's going to be so great. We're going to make the Hollywood Squares, man. The Squares. The Squares. <laughs> That's when I met Danny a long time ago, 74 maybe. No kidding. That's how long it has been. No doubt about that. Um, the um, the director of um, St. Elmo's Fire passed away recently, and I know that you were part of, uh, you know, back in the day, uh, so many films from that era. Um, do, you, do you have any... Sort of memories, sort of any, any any memories about last night or anything uh, that you'd love to, you know, revisit with me right now? What was it like about on the set of About Last Night, Jim? Well, uh, I'll tell you, um, it, was, it was made from a play that I did in Chicago, and it was a David Mamet play, Sexual Perversity in Chicago, and then it became a... A movie. I, I'll tell you what was an interesting story about it was was we got the script written and we took it to Don Simpson at Paramount who would come and visit me in Chicago and said this should be a movie. And I got a call from my brother John who said uh, Don Simpson just offered this to me and Danny. And I said, John, don't do it. This is my role. I developed it on stage. It's my character. He goes, Jimmy, you don't know Hollywood. You know, they're heat-seeking missiles. Danny and I are hot right now. They give everything to us. This is a good script. I want to do it. I said, John, I can't do Marlon Brando. I can't hold a sword. I can't eat a cheeseburger. I can't do anything. You eat it all up. This is mine. Leave it alone. No, Jimmy, if I don't do it, they're going to give it to Billy Murray. And wouldn't you rather have someone in your family do it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, right. And I said, John, just don't do it. Right. And he goes, yeah, you don't understand Hollywood. And he hung up. Well, apparently he passed, and apparently Billy Murray passed. I think John had something to do with that. It got into turnaround, and six years later we made it, and it changed my career. It's true. Uh, it, Rob Lowe made that happen. Yeah, so Rob made it happen what, in terms of the movie? and, and uh... Yeah, you, you, you need a bankable name. And Rob once Rob said he would do it, the studio financed it, and it, it was a gold picture. And then I got, I had an audition for it, believe it or not, with Ed Zwick. But I got it. You got it. And then, and you know, yeah. and it, it's still, my career. it's still, it's still, it still stands up. I mean, it's still, it's still a story that, that even though obviously the film is uh, well over 30 years, um, it's, it's still, it still works, Jim. Well, it's an authentic, a relationship movie you know it's about guys who have trouble committing it's about girls looking for love i mean and it's done in a very real authentic way ed swick really directed it well i gotta say right jim belushi here a couple more minutes left with with jim here on the rich eisen show trading places jim how'd you get involved in that one uh i was sitting in my dad's ranch down in the mountains outside of san diego kind of feeling low and i got a call from john lannis he said i got a little part for you want to do it i was on i was in san diego on a plane in new york (laughs) so it was uh 
was sweet. And is that sort of like an, an Animal House connection through your brother for Landis to call you up or, or what? Well, I don't know. I mean, Danny was in it, you know. Uh, Eddie Murphy was in it. I was yes. doing Saturday Night Live with Eddie at the time of filming. Right. Um, you know, um, maybe I hope it had something to do with family. You know, family is... You know, the number one fear in life is death, and the number two fear in life is the collapse of family. And, you know, you want to hold families together when there's a death or of a sibling or a parent or a severe illness in the family or divorce. You know, those things collapse families, and you get, you get traumatized. And that's why I think cannabis is really a great alternative medicine to Ambien and Xanax or hard liquor. I mean, I have a drink once in a while, but you know what alcohol can do to a family. And so cannabis is really, you know, it's a pathway for veterans to get off opiates, for overprescribed patients, for Alzheimer's, seizures, sleeplessness, hopelessness, depression, pain. It also enhances creativity. It enhances taste of food, music, the touch of your lover's skin. I mean, it's, it's really great. It's, it's euphoric and it makes you more compassionate. It's nonviolent. You know, Rich, I was a bouncer, and I never broke up a fight between two potheads. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, 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 you know, I inter, 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 you know, gotten in the middle of a fight between two potheads over who's going to have the last part of the Cheetos bag. That's right. But... <laughs> oh my gosh and again we're growing belushi's tonight before i let you go uh tell me about your philanthropic uh uh works that you're doing also the organizations that are centered around this industry uh, including uh the last prisoner project what's that about jim well uh steve the angel out of oakland he's like the godfather of cannabis he's been an advocate for 15 16 years he's a beautiful man very very committed uh we're part of a group called last prisoners project there are over 40,000 people incarcerated in the United States alone for uh, cannabis, nonviolent crime. And while thousands of us smoke it legally or sell it and profit from it, there's people in jail. Still, there's a guy, Michael Thompson, in Michigan who was charged uh, with three pounds of cannabis. He had 40 to 60 year sentence. He's been in jail for 24 years. He's 65. And now he's got COVID and he's in the hospital. Mm. Cannabis should not be a death sentence. So, you know, and, and communities of color have always been disproportionately, you know, harassed with with these types of uh, crimes, you know. And so it's we're really working hard to get these guys out. And we're making progress. The, the state's attorney in Michigan is... Uh, Looking at the Michael Thompson situation right now. Well, uh, it's called The Last Prisoner Project, one of the many things you can follow uh, on Jim Belushi's Twitter account at Jim Belushi and check out again uh, Growing Belushi premiering tonight at 10 Eastern Time on Discovery. Jim, it's always a fun chat whenever you call in. I hope to do this again real soon. Enjoy enjoy the vineyard and, uh, and, then, uh, and then the harvest. How does that sound? That sounds great. Thank you, Rich. I really appreciate your support, man. You've always been so good to me, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Right back at you. That's Jim Belushi, and he's also on Instagram, at Jim underscore Belushi, right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.